Hey, Salt Junkies. Maverick, professional aquarist at Magnificent Aquariums, custom aquarium company, back again with some more awesome aquarium content. And since last week we talked about the top 10 soft corals, I figured natural transition would be to talk about the top 10 best fish for a reef tank. Now, each of these fish are vibrant. They have awesome personalities. They are peaceful in temperament. They get along with most other tank mates and most are completely reef safe, but some have, you know, you gotta watch out for them. Um, so I'm gonna be doing a mix of larger species like tangs for larger tanks and some smaller fish for nano tanks. So without further ado, let's jump right into the video. So before I do, some of these fish, some of the videos of these fish are from some client tanks of mine that I personally take care of. So I hope you enjoy those as well. So at number 10, we have the world famous clownfish. And today I'm going to be putting the Ocellaris clownfish on the list just because of its versatility, hardiness, uh, beauty, its personality traits, its curious nature, their tendency to live and stay in anemones. Um, they're probably the most known and recognizable fish in all of the aquarium industry, mostly due to Nemo, but they were also popular before that movie. Um, and for good reason, they are awesome pets. They will come to recognize you over time. They can pair up. Uh, the dominant female will be the one that grows larger. They now have been aquacultured to have a variety of different morphs. So they, I know o ORA is doing a lot of that stuff. So they have Storm, uh, Snowflake, which is the one I want. They have like black ice. They have all types of different morphs for clownfish nowadays, the Ocellaris clownfish. Now the Ocellaris clownfish coming from the East Indian Ocean, as well as the Western Pacific Ocean and some parts of Southeast Asia and Japan. Um, yeah, they're pretty readily found in the hobby. They are, they can be cheap now. So, so at number nine, we have the blue or the hippo tang. I figured I would get Dory and Nemo right out of the way to start off because they are pretty cliche, but they are amazing fish. Blue tangs, hippo tangs. Uh, they come from places like the Pacific to Australia, Indonesia, and New Caledonia. So they're found pretty much all over the place. Um, they're icons. They are stunningly beautiful. They are pretty much peaceful fish unless they get very large and territorial to other tank species. Now they'll swim all over the tank. They will oftentimes find a little spot in the rock to hide and kind of when you do work on the tank or you move the lid around or you're and you scare them quickly, they'll go and hide in their little cave and they'll also sleep there. Um, now, they will also nip at algaes and they will need to be fed nori and frozen food as well as pellets. This is just what I recommend. Some people can get away with them on just pellets, but you know, I really like to try and give my fish as much of a spectrum as possible to reduce nutrient deficiencies. So if you're gonna buy frozen food, go with Brine shrimp, if it's a smaller fish, or ocean plankton from Hikari. They make some of the cleanest food, like I said before. They need room to swim, so don't put them in a tank under 100 gallons. Maybe even in uh, 150 would be more ideal because they do get pretty large. Uh, they are known to be reef safe, but I'm not, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I have seen larger hippo tanks eat lobophilias and eat elegance coral and eat mushrooms and things that you just really don't want to happen. So my advice, because I love this fish and I think they should be, you know, for the most part, put in reef tanks because they do better in there because they naturally graze off the algae and rocks. Um, so my advice would be to get a smaller hippo tank, maybe about one and a half, two inches, the smallest one you can find. And that way you can have your hippo tank for a long time. And when it gets too big, or maybe you start noticing him nip at corals, then you could just take him out with a fish trap because at that time he'll probably be the most aggressive fish in the tank or at least the most comfortable. For the most part, they don't eat corals. For the most part, they are reef safe, but every fish is different. Every fish has a mind of its own. You know, if you don't feed a lot, it might just get hungry one day and decide that your $500 um, coral looks like a yummy, tasty snack and you will be sad. So I'd recommend starting out with a small one, but other than that, they are really amazing fish. Now, I would recommend getting the yellow-bellied hippo tang, the ones from Hawaii and the warmer Pacific waters. They are a bit more expensive. The price jumps from around $80 to $100 to $120 to $140. But for me, that little yellow underbelly. At number seven, we have the green chromis, not the blue chromis. Now, the green chromis is native to the Indo-Pacific or Indian Ocean, and they're one of the few schooling fish for a reef tank. Now, they will 
follow you around the tank when there's a lot of them and they get comfortable in the tank. They might hide a lot initially, but that's because they're smaller fish and they get a little bit scared. But once they're in a group and they're comfortable and you're feeding and they know you, then they will follow you back and forth around the tank and it just looks really cool. It adds a ton of uh, movement and it fills a bunch of space in your tank, that open water center. If you don't have a lot of corals sticking up, um, they are amazing fish. Now, for these guys, if you're gonna do like more than five, then I would have at least a 50 gallon tank, at least probably more like 75 gallons. But if you're just gonna do one or two, then a 30 gallon tank is fine. They're not that big. You know, they don't really swim too much, but it's, you know, I always say the bigger tank, the better. So if you're gonna have more than five, my recommendation would be to have at least a 50 gallon tank, more like 75 gallon tanks. Now they are peaceful and they don't cost very much money. They're like, maybe 20 bucks a piece, 15, 20 bucks a piece. Um, and the reason I say green and not blue chromis is because the blue chromis is just simply, they don't do as well as green chromis. And to, to tell you the truth, I don't know why. I don't know if it's the way they're collected. I don't know if it's something in their diet that they're not getting in aquariums or some kind of nutrition deficiency that they're, you know, not able to fulfill with, you know, our man-made foods, not our man-made foods, but our packaged foods and whatnot but they just don't do as well. They can still live in aquariums, but it's just a lower percentage chance. And I would really just stick to the green chromis because they're your best. And at number six, we have the Mandarin Gobi. So in my opinion, these are one of the most beautifully colored uh, aquarium fish in the entire hobby, whether it's a reef tank or an artificial tank or a fowler tank, it doesn't matter. These fish are the bomb. They are beautiful with their greens, reds, and blues, and their long wide wings or fins that kind of look like wings and yeah they graze along the bottom very peacefully very slowly they are hunters so they will hunt for cocoa pods and they are just beautifully amazing i love them they are cute now you should only put these fish in a tank that is at least one year old this is because they need cocoa pods to survive um, they eat cocoa pods now I have seen some mandarin gobies eat some isis shrimp and some ocean plankton and some brine shrimp. So until you get them feeding on the frozen food, definitely make sure that your tank is older because they need those cocoa pods to survive and they need those to maintain their coloration. They need those to make sure they get all their nutrients because I doubt that the same nutrition from a cocoa pod is in a mysis shrimp or an ocean plankton or whatever it may be. They need cocoa pods. Now you can buy some cocoa pods cultured and dump them in your tank. And you know, if your tank is newer, that might be a little cheat way that you can get them a little sooner than a year old. But for the most part, they like mature tanks. And yeah, they are beautiful. They're amazing. They are very peaceful. They won't harm any of your other fish. They'll just graze along the bottom beautifully. And they're some of my favorite fish. They're also not that expensive at $25 to $50. They're a pretty good option considering how beautiful they are. So definitely consider the Mandarin Gobi for your pet. So real quick, I just wanted to say, I am trying out a new form of video. So usually I write a script and try to read from that script, but this time I just did bullet points and I'm kind of freestyling, I guess, a little bit more and just telling you, you know, I'm not being so specific scientifically about it or I'm not trying to be perfect. I'm just telling you what works for us. I'm just telling you as a professional aquarist that has over 20 clients himself, I'm just telling you what works for me and my clients and what, what my uh, co-workers who have over 100 years of experience combined have told me over the years. So I'm going to put all the scientific names down below as you've seen, but let me know if you like this style of video or not, because um, it's new to me and I want it to be a little bit more personal and less robotic. At number five, we have the yellow fox face rabbit fish. Now these fish range from the Indian Ocean to the Gilbert Islands. They are a yellow color that is pretty rare in the hobby, and they're not a faded yellow like the aquaculture yellow tangs, which I absolutely hate. They are just not the same bright yellow as the ones from Hawaii. But the yellow rabbit fox face is a great replacement until those yellow tangs are back in the aquarium industry, but they can get big. They are very peaceful. They don't eat corals from what I've seen. I've heard horror stories of some finicky fish eating corals, but any fox face we've ever put in a reef tank, I've never seen them eat a coral. I have seen hippo tangs eat a coral, which is why I recommend getting a small one. But these fish, in my opinion, are less likely to eat coral than a hippo tang. 
Now they are great algae eaters. They'll eat algae. I've even eat, seen some eat hair algae and red slime algae. Now they have two unique uh, abilities to them. So, right, they can camouflage at a moment's notice. So they can actually camouflage into the color of a rock or sand and they'll turn like pale white like a sand bed and brown like rocks to try to camouflage themselves and their top spikes their top dorsal fin is poisonous so if you get stung by one of those when you're feeding them it can be pretty painful but they're kind of shy fish don't worry about getting poked they won't really be that aggressive unless it's the first fish you put in there and you've had them for like years and years um but just be mindful of that now they can cost about 80 to 150 dollars in price depending on size um, and also i would not put them in a tank smaller than 125 gallons hate me all you want they're big fish they get larger um, i guess you can get away with 100 gallons but nothing smaller than 100 gallons they are rabbit fish they do take up space they do need room to swim even though they're not you know constant swimmers like a hippo tang or a green bird wrasse or something like that but they do swim a decent amount and they're gonna need a larger tank. Number four, we got the six line wrasse. They come from the Indo-Pacific and I'd recommend if feed the ones from Fiji if possible, just simply because the suppliers in Fiji are awesome. They do a really good job. Um, they have better setups there. They catch their fish without drugs. They just, they just do better there. Um, six line wrasses, they eat flatworms um, and other pests to keep your tank safe. They have pretty striped colors. They have a curious personality, but they're also a little bit timid. So it's kind of like a weird kind of thing. I noticed that when you see them in a larger tank, at least you'll be like, oh my God, there's a six line grass. And you'll see them go in and out of rocks and just, just barely leave the rock scape. And I just find that to be, you know, pretty cool. It just adds another dimension. When you see him, you're like, oh, there he is. Um, he's doing well. And uh, anyway, I love them. They are also pretty cheap for the hobby. I think they're around like $40 at most. Um, they are jumpers, so please get a lid for your tank because they probably will jump out at some point. They're also super cute. They have that cute little, like, almost like a pig face. I just think they're they're really cute. Um, they can get territorial if they are the fastest or the biggest fish in your tank. This is why I don't recommend them for nano tanks. Uh, I'd say at least 50 gallon tank for these guys. Better probably to have a 75 gallon and above tank because they are swimmers. They can get aggressive when they're bigger and they will outcompete your slower fish for food. So I wouldn't recommend them being the largest fish in your tank, which is why I would say put them in a tank above 50 gallons. But for the most part, they are peaceful, they are cute, and they serve a purpose, which is eating flatworms and other pets. So definitely look into these guys. They are awesome fish and one of my favorites. At number three, we have the Sailfin Tang. Now these guys are found all over the world, Indonesia, Hawaii, Southern Japan, Great Barrier Reef, New Caledonia. So it's pretty easy to find one from a good supplier and they live really well. They're really hardy. Um, when they're bigger, they can get really mean. So with tangs, I like to tell people, you know, add more than one at once if you have a large, a large enough tank, of course. And if you want like a super aggressive tang, like a sole hole, make sure they're in last and they're the smallest because they're assholes and they will bully other fish. But Sailfin tangs are not as mean as a sole hole, but they can be aggressive. They can be territorial when they get big. So my my advice for these guys would be to add them with another tang, like a hippo tang around the same size, or maybe have the sailfin be a little bit larger than the hippo and that will work out really well. And that will also leave you room to add a more advanced tang that might be a bit more aggressive in the future. Um, now these guys, I love them. They're a staple fish for us. They have these beautiful lines and of course, their iconic sail that when they get scared, they put that sail down and they go streamline and they go swim super fast. But when they're just cruising, chilling, looking for food, they have a larger sail that they put up and they just kind of go through the water like this. And, you know, they're always out in the front of the tank. They're not really afraid. They make great midwater swimmers. They are, for the most part, peaceful. Like I said, definitely peaceful to other uh, fish, you know, whether it be damsels or gobies or bunnies or whatever. Just, they might have some complications with tangs, like I said, when they get bigger. But for the most part, these fish are awesome. They range from 180 to $200, depending on the size and where they're from. 
Uh, there's also a subspecies of sailfin tang called the Desjardini sailfin tang, which in my opinion is a little bit more beautiful. Um, they're dark with some almost goldish lines in them, but it's pretty much the same fish, just a little bit darker, a little bit color, different colored lines. Um, they are tang, so they're grazers. They'll eat algae off rocks. They will need nori. They will eat frozen food like a pig. They love ocean plankton. They love I try to stay away from oyster shrimp because some of it is grown in a freshwater lake and I don't believe in feeding saltwater fish a freshwater um, shrimp. It just sounds wrong to me. So I try to feed them ocean plankton or ocean brine, brine shrimp or something of that nature. There's a lot of different foods out there, um, but definitely make sure they're getting nori and they'll also eat pellets, no problem. The next fish on the list at number two is the powder blue tang. Now, in my opinion, the powder blue tang is the sweet spot right in between the gold rim or powder brown tang and the Achilles tang because it's harder than Achilles, but it's a little bit more beautiful than the less aggressive, hardier powder brown tang. And they're also a great indicator fish. Now, what I mean by this is they usually have a deep blue color. And when it's a deep blue color, you know that your water parameters are great. But if something in your water is off, we noticed that their skin will turn pale and they'll have a pale blue instead of a deep dark blue. Now, these fish are beautiful. I absolutely love them, but they can be kind of assholes. Um, so typically you want to add these fish in maybe last or with a larger tang species or something else to kind of keep them in check because they can become territorial. They can be very mean. Please never keep a powder blue with an Achilles or a powder blue with a gold rim. I know some people online have had some success with it. Some of you may have even had success with it, but it is a risk. It is kind of a coin flip, as I like to say, and you never really know what's gonna happen. But each fish is different. Each fish does have a mind of its own. Each fish can do something different. You know, some fish that are completely reef safe or so, you know, so told like the hippo tang might just eat your you know, $500 piece of coral one day. And another hippo tank in a different tank may never do that from the same place. So you just never know with fish, but the general rule of thumb that we like to use is don't keep a gold rim with a powder blue and an Achilles, choose one. And that's why I chose the powder blue because they are a little bit harder than the Achilles and a little bit easier to keep. And they're great indicator fish and they are beautiful fish, a beautiful color blue. And yeah, they're mostly peaceful to other other fish of other species. But like I said, when they get big, when they get large, they can get territorial. So I'd recommend at least 150 to 200 gallon tank, at least because they are swimmers. They swim all the time. They swim back and forth. So definitely get a long tank if you don't have, um, if you have a 100 gallon tank that's really tall, it's probably not gonna work for them because they need to swim back and forth. And it's the same with an Achilles and it's the same with the powder brown. They need lots of room to swim back and forth because they are swimmers and they are grazers. So they will need nori, they will need frozen food. And yeah, feed your fish, <laughs> make sure they have algae to graze on. Not too much of course, but, and make sure they have a lot of room lengthwise to sustain their swimming needs. Now, these guys can be pretty expensive. They're $200 or so. And, you know, that might not be worth it for everybody. So if that's too much, then go for the gold rim tang. They're also a great species, but in my opinion, they're a little bit boring. And at number one, that just barely beat out the flame angel for me, it is the flame back pygmy angel fish. Now, this fish is from Africa. They are more likely, in my experience and the experience of, of my coworkers in the company, to be reef safe than flame angels. Um, we have probably 10 different tanks with flame back pygmies that are reef tanks, and none of them have ever eaten coral. But we have had a few times where some flame angels did eat coral before. Um, these guys need a minimum of a 50 gallon tank. They will need nori pellets and frozen food. They definitely need frozen food. They're more carnivores than anything else. But um, yeah, as long as you feed them brine shrimp or ocean plankton, they should be fine. As long with uh, pellets, I like to feed all my fish pellets. I think of them like a cheeseburger or like a cat treat or something, um, just to kind of fatten them up, make them healthier, make sure that they're hardier, they're gonna live. Uh, and just to cover all your nutritional bases. So uh, another thing that I forgot to mention is I also dose 
all of my fish food with me. It is called Vitality. There we go. And basically, it's just amino acids and vitamin C, and it's good for the immune system. It is good for the nutritional, uh, to avoid nutritional deficiencies and to avoid lateral line disease. And I mean, just like humans need vitamins, minerals, and amino acids to build muscle, grow strong, be healthy, so do fish. So look into Seachem by uh, Vitality by Seachem. It's a great product and it does make your fish a little bit more colorful even in my experience. Playing back pygmy prices range from $50 to $120 depending on where you get them from online. But you know, don't pay more than $100 for one, please. That's a rip off. You can get a flame angel for that. And if you like the flame angel better, then you know, take the risk. It's in my opinion, it's probably about a 40% chance that they will eat coral at some point in their lives. Not scientific. I didn't look that up, but just from being around the hobby, from seeing many different tanks, you know, I'd say 30 to 40% of the time they eat some coral at some point. And playing my pygmies have a much lower chance of doing that. So do with that information what you will, but for some people it'll be worth it. For some people it won't be, but for me, if I'm just having a straight coral tank with SPS and lots of expensive corals, definitely not worth it. I would go with the flame back pygmy from Africa. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe if you thought I've done a good job. I am trying to put videos out as fast as possible. I have a full-time job working for the aquarium company and I have another job as well to save money on the side. Um, but please comment your favorite reef fish, comment a horror story that you had a fish that was supposedly reef safe and ended up eating a expensive coral of yours. Um, leave a comment about your favorite fish or just a story in general. You know, I love having chats with you guys. You know, even if it's someone that uh, leaves a, a comment that I don't necessarily agree agree with. I love, you know, hashing it out with them and trying to figure out, you know, where they're coming from, where I'm coming from, because the great thing about this hobby is that there is so much to learn. There is so much more to discover, so much new information to uncover that, you know, it's impossible for anyone to know everything. So, you know, I love talking with you guys about it. I love learning about it more and more. I'm still young. I have so much to learn, but, you know, as long as I have an open mind and, take new information and apply that new information, then I'm sure my fish will be healthy for a long time and yours too. Now, keep testing your water and Maverick out.